empathy and trust uh, is super important when you want to create a long-term relationship with your customer and loyalty with your customer. I was amazed by the level of empathy uh, brands uh, were able to deploy, you know, like uh, uh, the level of transparency also, I think was uh, really interesting to see like brands really saying to their customer, look like uh, uh, it, it's tough for you, it's tough for us now, let's be in this together, you know, and I think the brands that were the most successful were the brands that were able to uh, work with this candidly, with uh, transparency and with um, uh, empathy. Hi, everyone. My name is Terrence Fox, Head of Innovation with iAdvise, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to another conversation with. Today, we're joined by a key player in the CX world, Content Square. Now, for those of you who don't know, Content Square empowers brands to build better digital experiences, and they're coming off of a huge May after raising $500 million for their Series E. And their experience analytics platform helps track and visualize billions of digital behaviors delivering intelligent recommendations that everyone can use to grow revenue. Uh, naturally, loyalty and innovation uh, are surround that, which has really been a, a large part of why Content Square has seen this explosive growth. Now, I am here to talk with the CPO, so one of the key masterminds, chief product <laughs> officers at Content Square, Lucy Buisson. Uh, and today we're going to tackle igniting the customer journey with conversation and analytics. Lucy, congrats on a wild year. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for the warm introduction. Yeah, I, I do my best to, to flatter you before we get started. <laughs> um, uh, Lucy, Good technique. To, yeah, uh, talk to me quickly, Lucy, about um, how you have been uh, personally uh, the past you know, year and a half. We're almost back to normal. It feels that way. Um, but how have you been staying busy? Um, actually, it's a very good question because uh, before uh, everything happened, I was traveling a lot, uh, you know, to uh, meet the team. I, I live in New York, uh, my, like uh, the product team and the R&D team are in Paris and in Tel Aviv. So I was traveling a lot. I was also traveling all the time in the U.S. Uh, to meet customer. And so when everything started, you know, I got back, I don't know, two days or three full days in my in my weeks. Uh, so it felt a bit weird at first. Uh, but I think um, it's been, a, a, in a way, it's been a very interesting period, right? We had to relearn how to work, uh, relearn how to interact with people, how to engage with people. So I would say that... I cannot complain. Like uh, Content Square is doing great. Our customers are doing great. Like uh, I think uh, overall, uh, I was part of the, the people that were lucky, lucky this year. So I don't feel uh, I could complain. Yeah, it's nice. Um, my last flight was March 12th last year. I still haven't flown. Uh, oh, wow. I, I am comfortable now, but I just haven't had a reason to go anywhere yet. Uh, and I'm trying to see how long I can extend that streak uh, before I fly again. Because, yeah, like you, it felt like we were in the air constantly. Exactly. Yeah. But you're going to lose all your loyalty points if you continue not flying like this. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a tough consumer. You can't win me over with loyalty points. <laughs> um, now, Lucy, uh, have you had any memorable digital experiences? Obviously, with so much that's changed in the past year and a half and digital first, um, I'm interested, have you experienced anything as a consumer that you thought was particularly interesting? Um, I, ex I, I would say I experienced very good things and uh, less good things. Um, I think uh, I was amazed uh, to see how quick all brands have uh, reacted uh, mm. last year uh, because now it's uh, like uh, now we got used to it. But uh, if we all remember, everything happened almost in the night, like uh, all stores closed. Uh, and I think uh, I was amazed by the level of empathy uh, brands uh, were able to deploy, you know, like uh, uh, the level of transparency also, I think was uh, really interesting to see like right. brands really saying to their customer, look like a, uh, uh, it, it's tough for you, it's tough for us now, let's be in this together, you know? And I think the brands that were the most successful were the brands that were able to uh, work with this candidly 
with uh, transparency and with um, uh, empathy. Uh, but also, I have to admit, I got a bit pissed off lately by all, um, I don't know, all businesses uh, that put on COVID every sort of things, you know, like uh, if you go into some hotel right now, you would like, they would tell you that they are not going to clean your room because it's mm. COVID. And right. you're like, I'm not sure I see the link, you know. So yeah. I think it's also interesting to see how some people, some brands are trying to to play with that or to use that as an excuse but um i would say that it's not the majority and um and the second thing is we see that with our client like uh, how many stuff they tried this year that they never tried before you know like uh, live shopping uh being able to um have converse like much more conversation conversation with their client like uh over uh, over different tools, over the website. And uh, I think it really like, uh, um, before we had a lot of mental barrier as a consumer, but also as brand. And mm. this year was so different. Everything changed uh, so fast that I feel like uh, a lot of those mental barrier were broke uh, and we were able to test many new things. So for me, this was the most amazing uh, this year to see how fast consumer reacted and how fast brand iterated, you know, to, to, to make the best of this new reality. Yeah. And, and right. They were forced to, right. Yeah. The, the brand. So uh, do you have a Lucy, a, a brand that you've been particularly impressed with anything that stand out to you? But I don't know. I don't think it's, um, it's new to COVID, but, uh, I'm a huge, uh, huge Amazon, uh, fan and, uh, and, uh, and client. And, uh, I think, uh, this year, they confirm, uh, uh, you know, that like that they are a very strong brand and they really care about their customer. You know, mm. what is amazing about Amazon is like every time you have an issue and you start interacting with them, the first thing they say is, I feel for you. And I, I recognize that the situation where you are now is not comfortable, is not a good situation. And I'm really sorry for that. And like... It feels so normal, you know, to say that, but most brand or a lot of brands, they don't do that, you know, like when you try to complain, uh, like they're going to first try to explain that it's not their fault. And right. in, at the end of the day, we don't care w which fault it is, you know, but being able to say, I feel for you, I think is um, very important and is really like uh, creating a strong connection uh, between uh, between the brand and the consumer. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yes. Uh, we've definitely heard about Amazon here on here before. Uh, convenience and safety and trust were very big topics for consumers. Um, and yeah, leading with that empathy is important, right? Yeah. And, well, you know, naturally you can imagine um, maybe not every consumer is as, uh, I guess I'll say kind to the massive amount of work and logistical work, operational work that Amazon has to pull off to do what they do. Uh, but yes, leading with that empathy, I think is extremely important. You know, we've seen that with our own clients yeah. as well. You know, leading with empathy over conversation is- So important, important. yeah. Yeah, um, at the end of the day, we are, we are human, you know? And I think we see that also because we all had to go online, you know, work online, uh, consume online, entertain online. I think we all also feel- uh, um, even more uh, grateful for those uh, moments of empathy, you know, like uh, right. because uh, it's still very important. And I think the other thing that is um, amazing about Amazon, and it's, they are not the only one, you have many brands that are like this, um, but it's how much they trust their, custom their customer, you know? Right. When you say, I did not receive uh, this package or it was late, they never ask for proof, you know? They trust right. you. And I think this is so strong because uh, I'm pretty sure when you do that too often, they start asking for some proof. But you know, that I'm pretty sure they know what is the normal um, frequency. And if you don't feel that you are going too far or doing it that too much, they just trust you. And I think this is also super empathy and trust uh, is super important when you want to create a long-term relationship with your customer and loyalty with your customer. Uh, Lucy, that sounds like someone who may have uh, tested that trust bridge. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh, so Lucy, talk to me a little bit about, we've, we've touched on consumer expectations, how they've changed. 
Uh, what do you feel is that, uh, you know, what do you think brands have to prepare for for today's consumer? Are there expectations that, you know, you need to have uh, to match the consumer? I think, um, I think uh, the most important thing, uh, what every brand should do and spend as much time as possible doing is listen to the, uh, to the customer. You know, like very often I'm asked like, uh, what do you think should be as the area of innovation, the area of focus? And if I have just one advice is spend time with your customer, sit down with your customer, listen to your customer, analyze uh, the way they behave on your website, you know, all those things, all those clues the customer are giving you, like you can use them to increase uh, the level of empathy and to really be able to understand uh, what they care for, what they need, uh, what they want to do, what are the pain today. And I really think that the, like the most powerful innovation really comes from your ability to listen to your customer mm -hmm. and really understand like uh, what they are trying to achieve and understand how you can help them uh, achieve that uh, faster and achieve that, I would say, with more joy also. Because it's not all about efficiency. It's also about uh, getting uh, getting some joy and getting some happiness when you are doing your daily stuff, you know? So um, I think, uh, like, really, like, um, practicing your listening muscle uh, when you are a brand is the most important. So, so through conversation, uh, through uh, analyzing your data on your website, uh, I think uh, it's it's... It's really like the fundamental uh, of the innovation. And Lucy, we, um, we, we mentioned a few times on this show in the past, uh, McKinsey study that talked about how 75% of consumers have changed the way that they purchase, who they're buying from, how they buy. Um, and naturally that ties down to first impressions, like you touched on a little bit as well. Um, what, in your opinion, uh, why are these first impressions so important? And how is Content Square helping with that too? I think uh, it's it's always been so important, right? You never get a second chance to do a first impression. Right. So I think it's uh, it's true all the time, but it's even more true uh, when you are talking of digital uh, digital experiences, because uh, while interacting people online, people are less focused. Most of the time, they are doing something else at the same time. So right. it's very fast to lose their attention or to create frustration. The second thing is uh, when you are browsing online, uh, when you are buying online, it's so easy to switch and to go to a competitor. It's mm. not like you have to do, you, it's not like you have to take a cab for 10 minutes or take the subway for 20 minutes, you know, like everything is here on your computer. So I think right. the, the, like uh, the um, less good focus because you don't control the environment of the user, plus uh, how easy it is to switch really explain why it's so important to, um, to, 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 to help your customer in the very first second they arrive on the website, you know? Mm. And helping your customer in the very first second is really about under, like helping them achieve what they are trying to achieve. If they are here by chance, because they liked, uh, I don't know, they liked the content they seen on Instagram. Uh, you need to catch their attention. You need to show your DNA. If they are here to buy as fast as possible a product they already know, it's a very different experience, you know? And mm. some of the times they are just here to uh, check an information. So really being able in the first second to have a homepage that is going to help drive and guide them into those different intents is super important. Right. And another thing that is super important is having a website that works, you know, right. because if you if you think that you only have a few seconds to convince them, like you don't want to spend those few seconds in a uh, loading time, you know, right. you don't want like those five seconds of attention to be just spent for the page to load. So I think this is super important. And I think mm -hmm. the other thing that is super important is the last impression you're going to do, uh, you're going to make on your customer because, um, you can have the best experience ever for eight minutes. If the last minute, the ninth minute is horrible, uh, your customer are going to only remember this last emotion, you know, this mm -hmm. last feeling they had. So first impression, but also last impression are super important, I think. 
Yeah, I can't imagine. Um, you know, with the first impression, I, like I was telling you in the beginning of today's segment, I am uh, a, a hard consumer. Right? I'm not someone that I, I don't earn loyalty. I don't <laughs> stick around for any reason. I'm very irrational, which is what Richard Thaler found with uh, his study years back. Um, so it's so interesting to really be hyper focused on that. You know, naturally, your digital presence is the first touch point since everyone was stuck at home. Yeah. These habits are sticking. People are sticking yeah. with it as their new way of purchasing. Uh, and the unfortunate thing that we see, Lucy, is that so many brands and retailers still have a very archaic way of engaging that first time or uh, ensuring that the web presence is different for a certain buyer or visitor than it would be for others. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity left. And naturally, it sounds like Content yeah. Square can help with that, right? Yeah, and uh, what we see is that... Um... Traffic is skyrocketing. Uh, conversion is skyrocketing. The revenue online is skyrocketing. Like if you talk to most uh, most businesses, they've done in one year their three years plan, four years plan, five years plan in online, right? Yeah. But what is not skyrocketing is NPS and digital happiness. When yeah. you ask people how happy they feel browsing online, on when you ask them how likely they are to recommend the websites you would see that those indicators at best were flat and in very, very often decreased. And mm -hmm. I think it's another way to, to say what you just said, you know, like, uh, yes, people are browsing more, uh, are buying more online. Um, they switch their way of doing. But if you are not able to create great experience, to analyze how people are behaving, browsing, to improve this experience, they are just going to become less and less loyal. And who can right. blame them, you know? Like, uh, if every time you interact with a brand, it's frustration, uh, who can blame you to change brand every time, you know? So I think it's uh, it's really something that is uh, now a massive um, challenge, but also opportunity for brand uh, to create more stronger uh, connection with our customer uh, by creating better experience, you know? Mm. Um, Lucy, I know we're almost at the time for the day, so I'll make this uh, quick, but I had one small question I wanted to ask you. Being the CPO of a, a major CX leader and innovator, um, it doesn't have to be about today's topic, but using your crystal ball looking forward, is there any innovation or uh, trends or things that you're keeping your eye on as it pertains to CX that you're fascinated by? I... I don't I'm know. Just if, out, of, out of nowhere at you. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's a very interesting question. I don't know if I am fascinated by it, but uh, what I like, I think the key topic for the future is omnichannel. And it's mm -hmm. realizing that a customer, when he is interacting with your brand, like for him, it's the same to be on um, as a social, social network, on your website, on the app, in the, um, in the store, you know? Right. And so like really thinking of the flow of the customer and really realizing that for him, all those touch points are the same and right. they really need to work together and you really need to make sure that your experience is taking into account all those touch points and that those, those touch points are not in competition, but mm. they are really complementary for right. me. It's is the future. And I think in a way it's fascinating right. because it's not that easy to do. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's so natural, you know, like uh, it's so I think this is what is fascinating. Um, well, I like that too, Lucy, when you think about uh, those with brick and mortar and how they're going to connect the store. I think yeah. that's a real area of untapped opportunity uh, because, you know, if I go in Walgreens, it should feel like the Walgreens app. Uh, yeah. You know, you have that exact experience. So exactly. I think that's a, a big opportunity. I like that. Um, well, Lucy, it was such a pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I do, uh, again, always like to talk to a fellow French company, French born company. Uh, but thank you again for the time. This was a pleasure. Yeah. I think uh, my French accent is a bit stronger than yours, but. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. right. Exactly. Yes. Uh, mine might have a bit of a New Jersey, New Yorker. Oh, yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. It was a pleasure to talk to you, to talk with you today. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Lucy. And of course, uh, keep an eye on the Content Square team. They just came off of a Series E of 500 million. Uh, this was Lucy Buisson, the CPO, Chief Product Officer from Content Square, tackling igniting the customer journey with conversation and analytics. Thank you all for joining. We'll see you next Tuesday.